Now, um, as has often been the case, I want to try and make sure this is as valuable to you as possible. Um, and I often think to myself, well, should I just give you the solution, like my solution, and just read through it? And for me, when I read someone else's solution, uh, the most valuable part of that solution, especially with proof questions like this, is not present in the written solution. Um, the most valuable part if, of it is why would such a person think to do or think to take such a line of reasoning? Why would they use that kind of deductive logic? What made them think, oh, I should connect this side and this angle and all that kind of thing. So what I want to try and do is talk you through two methods for part one. We'll go through part two um, fairly briefly. I think it's quite routine. I think that's what you'll find. It's just a bit of careful algebra and substitution. Um, but I really want you to understand the concepts underneath this because that's what you can apply to questions that will look nothing like this, but are still nonetheless within 3D vectors, okay? So uh, I think I've got a spot here, um, which I've called method one. And what I want to do is sort of laser focus you in on what's relevant in this question and what's missing, okay? So it says, what's the question asking? Show that AC is equal to, and then you've got this relationship over here on the right hand side with M and N, which are both sort of, um, they're, they're these uh, proportional relationships between um, the length AC and the length BC, right? Which we'll come back to in a second. So before we get to any of that sort of nuts and bolts, what I want to identify is there's vectors in this question. You can see them there in the diagram. And there's vectors in the equation, um, which will help us work out what's a, like if we sort of put them over the top of each other and work out the overlap, that will sort of chart a path through the question for us. So watch as I kind of try to reason my way through this and hopefully this will be helpful to you. AC, this is kind of the focus of this particular question, this particular proof. So let's start by putting AC on the diagram, right? And I've coded it purple, so there is AC right there between A and C, no problems, okay? What other vectors do we have in play? Well, we've also got B, um, lowercase b. So if I highlight there, where is lowercase b? In terms of this kind of start point, end point, like, you know, arrow and, um, and tail kind of way of describing a vector, that's going to be OB, right? From O to B, the origin, that's what it is by definition. And you can see it labeled there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to superimpose that on the diagram just so that I can start to piece together this jigsaw puzzle of how all of the different vectors are going to relate to each other. So there's OB. And then the third vector that gets explicitly called out is A, which, uh, you know, using the same logic is OA here. So you can see there's OA. I've actually drawn it backwards because that's just the way my hand went. Uh, but there you go. There's OA, right? Now, when you have a look at this, we want a relationship between AC, OB, and OA. And if you have a look at what's sort of um, formed here, there's kind of a very obvious missing piece that doesn't appear in the equation, but it does appear in the diagram, which I think we're going to have to reckon with, right? And you can see there, it's this CB vector, not to be confused with BC, because obviously direction matters. So CB over here is kind of the missing piece. It, it sort of completes this triangle, right? And what it shows us is if we take this green vector and this purple vector, which we we want, and if we add on this missing CB vector, then what you'll get is this blue vector. So we will have this relationship between green, purple, and blue, which is exactly what I need down here. I'm just going to have to somehow get rid of the fact that there's CB in there, right? There's no CB appearing here. So I'm going to have to use the relationships in the question to eliminate CB. Well, how will I do that? Go back to the question. I sort of scrolled off there on the screen, but I'll write it for you again. We have this relationship given to us, oopsie daisy, that CB on AC is equal to M over N, right? So that tells you you've got this relationship here. This is kind of M times longer than some unit. If this is N times longer than some unit, that's what the CB to AC relationship is. So you can see, I can reason from this and say, well, therefore, um, this is just talking about the lengths, but I can convert this into a vector statement by saying, well, I can talk about this in terms of uh, CB being uh, a proportion of that AC, right? M over N, I've just multiplied both sides by AC. And then because CB and AC are parallel, right? Therefore their direction is the same. The only difference between them is this magnitude, which I have the constant coefficient there for. So therefore I can reason that, uh, I'll just use this color, that's fine. The vectors, I actually can make the same statement about them, right? Actually, you know what? I shouldn't do that. I should write it separately. I can say since C, whoopsie daisy, 
CB is parallel to AC, so the direction is preserved. Therefore, oopsie daisy, sorry guys, I'm making this move everywhere. Therefore, this statement here covers the magnitude part of it, right? So I've got direction handled and just the magnitudes are different. So there, there's where I get this statement from. CB, I can substitute it, the vector, for M on N times, why am I writing that backwards? AC. Okay, so this is an important part. I mean, this is a show that question, right? So it's important you don't just skip over. That's why I sort of caught myself before this and then make the vector statement, right? It's only true because you've got this relationship of magnitude and then you've got this relationship of direction, okay? All right, once you've got that, you're sort of ready to go. I can just fit the pieces of the puzzle together and this will give us our two marks. This is kind of, I'd say one of the marks is the reasoning here. Um, in fact, not just, I would say, the uh, HSE marking guidelines, which I encourage you to download, by the way. They're very, very helpful. Um, if you're ever unsure, like when you're trying to read and interpret, like what does this actually mean? Just let Mrs. Lisa or I know, we'll be happy to help you out. Um, but in this case, uh, I know that getting this relationship here and showing the reason why, that's a whole 50% of this, right? Well, let's do the other 50%. Uh, AC is on the left-hand side. So let's start with saying I can go from OA to AC to CB. So that is going along from the origin up to A over to C and then to B. That is the same if you just have a look at my A's being strung together and my C's being strung together. That's just the same as going from O to B. Can you see that? You can see how I've added it all up together just by concatenating all those vectors one after the other. And now I just have a substitution to make in order to get from um, this to some of our lowercase with our tilde um, vector notation, right? So I'll substitute this for A. I'll leave AC, I don't need to change that because that's going to be part of what's in my final line. Uh, I'm going to substitute this CB that I said before um, because there is no CB in the final line that we're trying to prove. It's M on N times AC. So you can see there's going to be some collecting of like terms by factorization there. And then on the right hand side, I've got B, right? So this is kind of, most of the heavy lifting has been done at this point. I just need to carefully rearrange and uh, look after my algebra. So it looks like I've got AC uh, left on this side and I can take out that factor, leaving me with this inside the brackets. And then as sort of predicted, if you have a look at where you're headed, you've got this B minus A. So that's why I sub subtract A from both sides to get it over there on the right hand side. Um, I'm almost there, right? I'm just going to put this into, combine into one fraction to make the division a bit easier. Um, and you can't skip this, right? It's a show that question. So don't, don't go past this, this crucial part of the logic. Um, this is going to be n over n. That's the one, right? So n over n plus m over n will give you this. Uh, nothing has changed over here on the right hand side. And then I just need to divide through. So I will do AC, or you could cross multiply if you prefer to think about it that way, to N on M plus N, and then here's the B minus A that we were required to prove. So that's it, as required, okay?